Today I'll be talking about Halo 2. Halo 2 is the second installment to the Halo game series and was officially released in November 2004. The game is a military-themed first-person shooter game for Xbox consoles. The game sold 2.4 million copies on the day it was released and won the Console Game of the Year award for its impressive story, gameplay, visuals and audio effects. This game is significant for more reasons than just its impressive visuals for its time. It also carried a very heavily inferred historical context that was shaped by the events that were happening in the early 2000s. Whilst the game has no deliberate political messages communicated to players, it is very clear that there is a rhetoric that underpins the gameplay and storyline. The game narrative contains elements that can be compared and articulated to current events at the time of release and production, resonating profoundly with the war on terrorism. The war on terrorism consumed America in the early 2000s. The September 11 attacks were a tragedy that unfolded right on our TV screens and all over the world, including here in Australia. It was a monumental loss that entrenched us in a new fear of terrorism. With military-themed first-person shooter games often being based in real life, such as the Call of Duty series which glorified World War II, it's not hard to believe that a game exists that glorifies the war on terrorism. Halo 2 began its development in late 2001 after the September 11th attacks. The beginning of its development and its release all occurred within the Bush administration presidency in which George Bush was president from 2001 to 2009. Halo 2 was also released a year after the beginning of the Iraq war. Halo 2 lead writer Joe Stanton released a statement saying, let me be really clear about this, there is no intentional political message in Halo 2, anti-Bush or otherwise. While I tried to be mindful of folks, folks' sensitivities as I write its story, I knew that the game was going to be scrutinised by a large, diverse audience and would therefore be interpreted or misinterpreted, as the case may be, any number of different ways. In games, it's always up for the player to make their own meaning. However, I think with such a suggestive narrative, it's hard for players not to interpret the social, cultural and political significance of the game. The gameplay and story potentially positions players to inherit certain beliefs about the war on terrorism unintentionally. In knowing that this game is conceptualised by a post-9-11 landscape, this game may have an effect on players' attitudes towards the Middle East and Islamophobia, as well as interpreting the storyline as a condemnation to the Bush administration's presence in the Middle East. The gameplay discourse eerily aligns with the post-9-11 context. In Halo 2, you are the human protagonist and you are on a team with the goal to defeat the Covenant, who are the antagonists. You therefore have the option to play one of two characters, the Master Chief or the Arbiter, who both share the same game outcomes. The Covenant is identified as a religious movement and they are portrayed as aliens. The goal of the game is to protect the human race against this invasive en enemy by killing them and rising up the ranking levels. Their dialogue concerns sacred rings, holy rings and sacred journeys. This religious discourse that the enemy uses is reminiscent of how Islam is perceived in the same way that Islamophobia was experienced in America and how the Middle East was alienated during the production and release of this game. When the players first discover the ring, you and the team are told if activated, this ring will cause destruction on a galactic scale. Through this link from religion to catastrophic destruction, this game encapsulates the relationship between religion and war that we see reflected into the real world through the fight against the Taliban and ISIS. It's hard to miss these key comparisons between the game world and the real world, and they feel very deliberate. In concluding, the underlying rhetoric of Halo 2 is undoubtable and may have contributed to how players once viewed the war on terrorism at the time of release. This is just one example of many games that are shaped by historical context and also shape our own context as players.